Hello, I'm Lux, and oh my god, ponies! <laughs> and I'm Ember, and yes, ponies are back. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 7, Episodes 1 and 2, Celestial Advice, and All Bottled Up. This is a surprising opener. No big villain, no really big anything, just two solid episodes. And no cliffhanger. Yeah, usually there's like, it's just one big episode tied together with a big climax and middle and surprise and oh, these were just two very good episodes. Very solid. I really wasn't sure what to expect from this season's opener because I try really hard to avoid spoilers. Mm -hmm. And I missed all of the spoilers. I didn't know what we were getting in this episode except for one trailer I saw so I knew Starlight was involved and that was it. Yeah and Starlight was involved in both episodes so. Mm -hmm. Oh and you probably have noticed already I'm doing a little change up. I'm not doing a customized drawing per episode and coloring in drawings I've done previously. This one is a previous Starlight Glimmer drawing. So yeah you, you may have noticed in uh previous iterations that Lux has done slightly quicker sketches so now he's taking the opportunity to go back and add some finishing touches and make them prettier than they already were. Yep, filling in details that I didn't get a chance to do because I was running out of time and so yeah I'm just taking the opportunity to fill in these drawings so you may see some from previous seasons I've done that I never got a chance to actually fill in. This time I'm doing one from last season. But now on to the actual episodes. This one was nice. I'm not quite sure how I feel about Discord's involvement in this episode. He was definitely Discord. That's all I have to say, but mm, I'm just not quite sure. Because he was like on the edge of annoying me. It's like you were doing this just to aggravate Twilight. He does that a lot. Yes, he specifically picks on Twilight out of all of them. Mm hmm Repeatedly. It's getting a tiny bit old, Discord. You're the spirit of chaos, therefore you should not be predictable. Yeah, and I think what was, at least based on his end quote, I think he actually was trying to hint Twilight into having her be sent off to his dimension for them to hang out and stuff like that. But he definitely needs to learn how to give a proper hint. He needs some work on his interpersonal skills overall. Yeah, yeah. We might see more of that from Starlight Glimmer and him interacting that he actually learns lessons from her. Just like in the next episode where Trixie learns a lesson from her and Starlight Glimmer learns a lesson from Trixie in the process. Which most people who've seen Trixie wouldn't think would be possible. Mm-hmm. But back to this episode. <laughs> the first of two. Yeah, so just fast forwarding close to the end of the episode, the cheese pun, I was just, I was painful mainly because Lux and I went through an evening of doing cheese puns not that long ago. Yeah, yeah, it was a good time. <laughs> yeah, until he started to cheese me off. <sighs> Quick, give me another cheese pun. <laughs> I'm trying to remember all the ones we did. Oh yeah, I think you could do cheddar than that. Ah, uh, <laughs> I'm just leaving this in as intact. <laughs> yeah, we were we were very punny that night. Yeah. And for another pun I came up with, go to my Tumblr and look up Machu Picchu. Uh, that was a fun one. Lots of Pokemon Go there. Yeah, what I really liked about this episode is the interactions between Celestia and Twilight. We got some more of that now that they're on the same level. They actually can have more conversations as actual people interacting instead of a teacher and a student interacting. Yes, while Twilight is still looking to Celestia for guidance, since they're no longer strictly in a student-teacher relationship and are both fully-fledged adults in their own right, it can be a more equal friendship. Mm-hmm. And Celestia's allowed to do things like she did, which was burst into laughter. 
which was awesome. For a second, I was going, is that Discord? Yeah, for a second there, I thought, like, Discord popped into the room and started laughing, but then I realized, oh my god, it's Celestia. I no, know why she's laughing. No, I was thinking that it was Discord disguised as Celestia. Hmm. That's what I was actually thinking, that Discord either popped into the room and transformed into Celestia and popped Celestia out, or what you're probably thinking of was Discord the entire time. Yes, uh, your phrasing wasn't being clear to me on what you were picturing. I love, you know, the flashback and how Celestia saw this non-social behavior early on, but couldn't bring herself to take the steps that would have gotten Twilight integrated with the rest of the main six years sooner. Mm hmm Though what's really interesting is how they showed the main six interacting together, and I don't think they actually interacted together too much beforehand. They knew each other, but they weren't really friends' friends until Twilight came along, because that was kind of hinted at in the earlier episodes, especially with Rarity's and Applejack's interaction. Yeah, the while the other five members of the main six knew each other, they weren't really friend friends. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Pinkie Pie's friends with everyone, so that yeah. almost goes without saying. Mm -hmm. Also, they were showing kind of older in that shot of Celestia in the town, looking at them, and then they cut back to a younger Twilight, and then they cut back to an older Twilight, so the timeline in these flashbacks and stories were a little choppy. A little bit, but we don't know the exact age differences between all the members of the main six. Just because they all happen to get their cutie marks at the same time, there is no specific age for getting one's cutie mark. Mm-hmm. Is this sure that Celestia didn't know about the sonic rain boom event with twilight and her friends until much later probably when twilight wrote about it in the letters yes well celestia wasn't really in a position to see it because when it happened she was nearby twilight's testing so mm -hmm. she was reacting to the fact that suddenly a dragon popped through the roof of the school building mm -hmm. and she was probably wondering what the rainbow thing was about and i like how celestia actually went Wow, there's a saying about me? Well, it is true. I don't know. <laughs> you know just some wonderful self-referencing. I mean, not that the ponies haven't said it in the other episodes, but apparently no one's ever said it around Celestia. Yeah. It's, it's just like, oh, apparently I'm supposed to know everything. <laughs> Though th this is surprisingly fitting in this situation. Okay, let's continue. Mm -hmm. Also, if you're hearing the noises... Kitty has thought it appropriate to go crazy time while we're doing recording. <laughs> Apparently she's hunting something. Probably that glitter ball from earlier. Probably. I don't think she's killed it yet. Hmm. More thoughts on this episode? <laughs> Seeing the changelings again, it's amazing how well they blended into the audience now that they're the more pastel colors. Mm hmm And I like how we actually get a little bit of an update of how, like, yeah, it's really hard being a ruler. Yeah. Yeah, especially when you were kind of the meek and mild of all the changelings. I mean, you look at his design compared to everyone else, pretty sure he was meant to be the ruler. And that reminds me, I actually laughed pretty hard during the scene where Pinkie Pie was reacting to Luna trying to put the metal on him. Yeah, I'm like, just tear the ribbon and retie it. But it just really points out that these are traditionally given to ponies. Mm-hmm. They're just Pinky's reactions. Come on, you can... I mean, just it! Um, yeah, yeah, you gotta, you gotta... No, yeah, you got... Yes! <laughs> yeah, it was just a little bit of an awkward moment of, oh, yeah, metal for the heroes and... Uh, and, you know, Discord got around it with chaos magic. Mm -hmm. Just pops his head right off. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I know you didn't really have to think about this in advance, Luna, but wouldn't it be easier if you went over one antler at a time? Or just magically stretch the ribbon? Or just teleport it so that it's around his neck? Yeah. You know, you're Luna, one of the two sisters. I'm pretty sure you have enough magical power to do that. You move... A celestial object. <laughs> yes, I'm pretty sure you could have just teleported the metal around Thorax's neck. Mm-hmm. And I would have liked to have seen 
more interaction with Zorax and the other changelings and the ponies instead of just the little tiny cuts we got. But I was enjoying Twilight's uh, fantasy, fantasy scenarios. Because, <laughs> uh, no, Spike, this is Twilight's fantasy. There's no wrong way to fantasize. <sighs> the brony fandom knows that all too well. <laughs> Uh, staying clear of that. <laughs> but Hides I, the fan fiction once again. <laughs> it was just interesting because she's thinking of all these different ideas and going best case, worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. Which is something that that planning personality type does. Mm -hmm. But this was showing it where what can happen when it goes to the extreme. Mm -hmm. When you're overanalyzing and worst case scenarioing so bad that you freeze up, which is kind of an emotional intelligence thing, is you have to be able to work past the emotions to get to logic. And in this situation, she was starting with logic and then getting emotional. Mm -hmm. And I almost expected that the gift might backfire a little bit because Starlight Glimmer may not have the best view of herself. So looking at yourself in the mirror every morning, you know, being reminded of, oh, yeah. I'm me. Yeah, like I did those terrible things in my past. Really terrible things that my friend keeps reminding me about. What? It, you know, it's a nice gift and it was nice of Twilight to understand that, oh, I don't have to send you away. Mm-hmm. And for Starlight to understand that she didn't have to leave. But the blatant relief on both sides, I'm like, guys, guys, that, that doesn't really look good for either of you. Emotionally, I understand, but Twilight to go, no, I didn't want you to have to leave. Though, I gotta say, if you were gonna send her someplace, my preferred place to send her would have been back to her village that she originally came from. Even though she's mended her relationship with those ponies, her going back there and actually living there again for a while would also help. Yes, because in all her time in that village, because, you know, she created it, mm -hmm. she was always in charge. Mm -hmm. So being able to reintegrate into a community from a new standpoint. And who knows, we may see that. Yeah, she may choose to go there. She may go choose to spend time with Sunburst. She may go with the changelings, the least likely I think is going into the Dragonlands and spending time with uh, Dragonlord Ember because Starlight doesn't know Ember. Starlight worked with Thorax, is friends with Sunburst, mm -hmm. and has made amends with the ponies of the village. So I think all of those would be good for her. And speaking of the dragons, apparently Twilight has been watching too much 90s TV. Dude, bro, isn't it awesome? Yeah. Yes, extreme. We do all this fun, dangerous stuff. Also, weren't the rocks shaped as ponies? The rocks are blowing up. I'm pretty sure that we stuck in such a way to resemble ponies. Uh, I would have to go back and pause and look at those as... I was seeing them more like hurdles or um, goalposts. Yeah, I, basically what I saw was what you saw, except without the top of one of the posts. So it was in the shape of a four-legged animal with a head. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean a pony. Yeah. I also love the, how Spike goes, you know, she probably would have teleported herself away, Twilight. But what if she didn't know? Yeah. I don't know how that would happen. It would be have to be like a... She would have to be standing next to a lava pool and be bumped into it to have no reaction time. And the likelihood of Starlight Glimmer standing next to a pool and being knocked into it is pretty low because I'm pretty sure she wouldn't want to ne stand next to something that can burn you just by standing next to it. Yes, and if she did, she would probably already have a protective spell going so that she didn't get burned by being in close proximity. Mm-hmm. Nitpicks. Yes. Though I think the, the changeling scenario was more likely. Because there's probably still some bad apples in there. Yeah, and also, as we saw with 
starlights are a glass season, it takes time to change behavior patterns. Thorax probably isn't going to slip because even though we didn't get to see his progression, he had a progression. Mm -hmm. He had more time around ponies. Because apparently you need time around ponies to be friendly. Apparently. Well, look at Spike, look at Ember, mm -hmm. look at Thorax, look at Gilda. Gilda. Are we ready to move on to the next episode or did you have more? Well, we haven't even touched on Pinkie Pie's decorating and cleanup. <laughs> I like those little inter interludes. It's like they were specifically designed to be ins and outs for like a play or something. So, or like a one of those old animated cartoons, like the Warner Brothers and stuff like that. Because she was typically looking at the audience the entire time. It was a real nice touch. I liked it. Yes, it was interesting to see her almost instantly decorate the entire hall without using the party cannon. Mm -hmm. I don't think we've ever seen her do party cleanup. No. And the animation on that machine, like you said, it was very old school Warner Brothers, like um, almost rubber hose style animation. Mm hmm. Oh, the quality of the animation in this episode was really good. I don't think it's with the new software yet that they are currently using for the movie that's coming out or have used for the movie coming out. I don't know how much of the process they've actually gone through yet, other than there was a teaser trailer released for the new movie and all it was was a bunch of flying text and slight snippets of ponies from the movie, but not actually any scenes from the movie. And the art director went, they broke it. <laughs> the art director of the movie watched the, the teaser trailer and went, they, they, they broke the colors. Because <laughs> everyone was complaining about the colors are off in this. Twilight and the girls don't look right. And the art director went, yeah, they didn't convert them properly. We're all mad. <laughs> <laughs> but on to the second episode. Is we're we're going to have to scrape up some money to go to the theater. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's going to be like less money and more time. Or both. Actually, it's probably going to be both. It's going to be both. Because cost of the movie ticket... Cost of concessions, because that's where the theaters get their money from. Finding a theater that's showing it at a time that's convenient for us. And going at a time where it's been out long enough that we're not going to be stuck with a bunch of screaming kids. But not out so long that there's only one showing a day. Mm -hmm. But as you said, on to episode two. All bottled up. Yep. A new lesson for the series. Yes, that you shouldn't repress your emotions. Yeah, and be f honest with your friends about your emotions. If you're angry at them, tell them. Just be gentle about it. Yes, try telling them in a constructive way. Like, this really bothered me. This hurt my feelings because. I'm upset because. Oh, not more than just, I am so mad at you and start yelling. If you can explain why something hurts you, people are much more likely to be sincerely apologetic. Mm hmm It also helps them learn so they don't repeat the mistakes in the future, even though it may take them a couple of times. So, nice to see new lessons because, as Twilight was saying, like, we're running out of lessons here. Because, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're a few seasons in and, mm -hmm. and the show is still running. A few seasons, yeah. Well, children's shows tend not to last this long, unless you're doing something with completely new iterations, like Power Rangers and Scooby-Doo, things that keep going but aren't necessarily canonically connected or have an ongoing cohesive cast. Mm -hmm. And this episode also did a lot of self-referential humor. Yes. Especially with Sun... <laughs> Starlight. Starlight Glimmer going, yeah, they'll probably just hang out, do some friend stuff, and then sing a song. And that's what it was. And it was the cuts between the main six and going back to Trixie and Starlight were really nicely timed. Mm hmm. And me and Ember were sitting there going, I think this is what's going to happen. She goes, No, I think this is what's going to happen. Mine was, The song is going to take too long and they'll run over time. And mine was, that key isn't actually the way out. They followed the wrong set of clues. 
or that wasn't the final key. The door would open, but it would only open into another puzzle. Yeah, Abby was basically calling out to the TV going, come on, turn the key. The key's in the lock. Turn the key. Just turn the key. Because like the pony said, the game doesn't end until you actually escape, which means you have to unlock the door. Mm hmm I would love to go to an escape room. Those sound like fun. And they did Legend of Zelda ones, Legend of Zelda themed ones recently. Oh, that would have been so fun. Yeah. Especially since apparently they upped the ante on some of the newer ones. A recent article I read, I haven't read all the way through yet. I basically just skimmed the headline and the basic blurb of text below that. Ah, no. They they look very interesting. I, I would want to get a group of trusted friends together because mm -hmm. I've heard somewhere you just go with a random group of people. I'm like, no, if I'm going to be locked in a room with you, first I need to trust that I'm going to be let out. And second, I need a group I can work with. Mm -hmm. Especially since some of these puzzles can take a while and a lot of outside thinking. Yes, a lot of non-linear thought processes. Mm-hmm. And I love how Rarity misunderstood. Oh, Manhattan escapes. Sounds like a spa. Mm-hmm. Like an escape, a retreat. Nope. I love how in the episode when we both heard, Oh, it's one of those! I want to go to one of those! It was basically our immediate reaction. Mm-hmm. Wow, um, my brain just went, a My Little Pony themed one would actually wouldn't be too bad either. A specifically Daring Do themed. Ooh, that would work really well, actually. Yes. And they could make it family friendly. Instead of making it easy for little kids, making it family friendly so there's some puzzles for the adults in the room that the adults have to solve, some of the puzzles the kids have to solve to help the parents solve their puzzles. Mm-hmm. And you can't get out unless the, all the puzzles are completed together. Mm-hmm. It's probably one out there like that already. Probably. Probably not Daring Do themed, though. Probably not. Back to the episode. Mm-hmm. And Trixie learning magic and learning to get better at her magic is nice. I just get a little nervous with Starlight being a teacher of magic, considering her ridiculous level of magic power. Mm-hmm. Learning that she uses her emotions to focus her power explains a lot. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, Trixie. Learn tact. Please. Though I loved her in this episode. Like, I know people like that. I'm kind of people like that. <laughs> you can be. But she was just so excited that she got the teacup transformation. It's like, mm -hmm. that was awesome. Because... That's a reasonably high-level spell. Apparently I was thinking of teacup poodles. <laughs> yes. More puns. And then ruining the tea cakes and then going, Oh, here, you just do this instead. And then, as if that wasn't bad enough, Trixie, you go out of your way to point out that Starlight brought pretzels. Kind of would have been better not to have anything mm -hmm. instead of the pretzels, especially when you call back. As they're leaving on the train, also one bag of pretzels, six ponies. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure Pinkie Pie would have brought a lot of snacks. Based on what we've seen in other episodes, I'm pretty sure they were covered. Mm -hmm. And even if she didn't bring any snacks, I bet you there's some hidden on the train that she hid there, you know, for emergency snack. Mm -hmm. I mean, she has emergency things everywhere in the town. I'm guessing she probably somehow has some on the train. Pretty sure, especially considering she managed to hide AJ's uh, her swarming gift on the train at one time. So, yeah, and just seeing how drained Starlight was getting the more she bottled up her anger. Mm -hmm. It was like she was taking not just her anger, but all of her emotions out of her. Her passion came with the anger. So it was all interconnected, and as she shunted the anger aside, and since her emotions power magic, as she was taking the emotions away, she had no magic. Mm -hmm. Though that reminds me, very nice mane animations and deformations of Glimmer's mane. Yes, very nice alterations in the design. And at least Trixie was finally noticing something was wrong when Starlight was looking physically ill. And how she was kind of not saying anything with any gusto. Or any emotion at all, and just like, oh, okay, we'd better go if we're going to go all the way to the Crystal Empire. Mm-hmm. 
And I almost thought a little bit more was going to go on with the Spice Nets, considering, you mm -hmm. know, Trixie got them, and then both the shopkeeper and Granny Smith wanted some, and they went to go get them from the cart. And I love how we're getting more background character evolution, especially with, what is he called now? Bulk Biceps? Yes. Is that his, that's his official name? Yes. I'm going to call him Snowflake. Yes, so his canon name is Bulk Biceps. Yeah, I like how we're like evolving bulk biceps. I'm like, what? I wear multiple hats. Yes, well, I'm pretty sure we've seen him at the spa before. Mm -hmm. So when you think about his cutie mark crusader problem, he's probably also teaching. I wonder if we're going to see them this season. Probably. And then someone in the comments is going to go, well, if you pause right here in the first episode, they were at the party. They probably are. Don't care. I'll see them later. <laughs> so, do we have more to go over on these episodes? Or this episode? Uh, minor nitpick. It was all four princesses that were rescued from the changelings. Mm. Why were only three of them at the party? Oh yeah, Cadence wasn't there. Yeah, all the other princesses were up making the presentation. Mm, maybe Cadence had something to take care of. Entirely possible. Yeah, because she does run her own separate kingdom. Yes. But, you know, Sunburst made it, so we had someone from the Crystal Empire, so maybe... He's a representative. I know Griffin's going to be happy to see him. <laughs> Friend I know. Well, it's hard sometimes. We get introduced to someone we find interesting, and then they're either a background character or they're never brought back. Speaking of background characters, DJ Pwn3, a.k.a. Vinyl Scratch. I have to say DJ Pwn3 because that's actually the official name. Yeah, well, as apparently happens in most instances, I prefer the fan name over the canon name. But yeah, you can't have an appropriately rockin' party without a good DJ. Mm-hmm. And apparently Vinyl is tops. Apparently. But we don't have anyone to compare her to, because as far as music variety, we have Vinyl, we have Octavia, and we have the four-part acapella of the group that Fluttershy briefly joined. Yeah, this was a good start to the season. I know it, like, doesn't sound like it because these are two perfectly normal episodes, but it's a good start. It leads off from where we left off in the previous season, and nothing big happened. That's kind of awesome, really. Yeah, as we finished the last season with a huge finale. I mean, we made alterations to an entire race of beings that managed to kidnap all four of Equestria's princesses. So referencing back to that is a good callback, and not everything has to be epic. You know, a lot of the MLP episodes are slice of life or lesson focused. It's interesting to see them change the opening like that. Because mm -hmm. they've all been two-parters, and they've all had a villain of some level. I was expecting to see Chrysalis at the beginning of this season. I'm sure we'll see her before the end of this season. Or she'll be the end of the season if they're going to um, do the usual pattern, but who knows? Maybe we'll have a mid-season kind of climax thingy, and then we'll do something different at the end of the season. Especially since the movie. I can't remember when it's coming out. I think it's probably coming out somewhere near the end of this season. Yeah, and how much effort did they put into tying it canonically to the series? Because some movies just completely divorce from the reality of the series, and mm -hmm. they don't fit in. Power Rangers! <clears throat> <laughs> Uh, yeah, because they had to redo it because of the footage they were using for the TV series. Yeah, so the whole thing with Ivan Ooze and new powers, and then we got a do-over. Wait, the, the, the thing with the Tengu and the woman turning into an owl and none of that happened? I just imagined it? <laughs> we're talking about multicolored ponies here, not multicolored Power Rangers. <laughs> Teenagers. But <sighs> MLP can be classified as a Sentai show. Yes, yes it can. Uh, I also do wish I could have seen the Power Rangers movie in theaters. The new one, not the old one, which I didn't see in theaters either. So, are we ready to sum things up? It's like, no way, that is too much. Let me sum up. 
Oh, through the magic of editing, hopefully there won't be too much. <laughs> magic, she says. More like my back-breaking work. Uh, let me rephrase that. More like my finger-breaking work. <laughs> they look fine to me. A wink. <laughs> uh, I mean, your hooves don't have any chips at all. So overall, what did you think of these two episodes? I was surprised. It was not what I was expecting. It was very nice. So, like we said in the beginning, two solid, air quotes, normal episodes. You know, no epic battles, no mystical item to go grab, no ancient evil having been unlocked. Mm -hmm. You know, no prophecy, no catastrophe, catastrophic spell gone wrong. Everything was perfectly normal. For that universe. <laughs> and I liked it. I thought both episodes were well done. As usual, there's always a little bit of ruffling around the edges, but, you know, nothing's perfect. But they were solid episodes. They were both enjoyable to watch. I haven't laughed that much at a Pony episodes in a while. I still enjoy them, but these ones I was like, Ember can tell you, I was laughing thoroughly in each episode. Yes, at, and a lot of times the humor falls... A little short for us. We'll, like, get a smile, but not actually laughing. Well, I hope you enjoyed our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 7, Episodes 1 and 2, Celestial Advice, and All Bottled Up. Thank you for listening. Please like, share, subscribe, comment, check out other videos. If you enjoy Lex's art, you can find more of it on Tumblr, Twitter, and DeviantArt. If you would like to support this channel financially, there are links for Patreon and Coffee.